In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on and earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we glorify you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, and in the of God, Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant, Elikim, son of Hikakim. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash. 
and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Elikam's shoulders. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Matthew. 
Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Unity is a, an expensive commodity. In the upcoming elections, we'll soon be bombarded with calls to be united around a particular candidate or a political issue. In school or in the workplace, we're encouraged, if not required, to work as a unified team to reach particular goals. And in our families, we go to great lengths to preserve unity and peace amid the many challenges that we face. And all of these, these three examples of unity have a proper time and place and, and are good things in the right order. But what our Lord teaches us is that those forms of unity will always pass away. They'll always fail in the end. Political systems will come and go. Schooling and careers will come to an end and families ultimately pass away through, through death. But thanks be to God, there is a form of unity that lasts forever, for which our hearts always are longing, desiring, that true, lasting unity found only in Christ, only in God, that indestructible communion with God, that takes place only with him. The collect this evening, the opening prayer, read, O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose. That single purpose is knowledge and love of God himself. We asked him in the collect to Grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise. When we love and desire a common object, we're united in that, in that endeavor. And when that common object is God himself, we're united with him in a bond that cannot be shaken, but for our own choosing. We see this beautifully lived out in the sacrament of marriage, where a man and a woman have God as the common object of their love, where the husband vows to love God above all else through his exclusive love to his wife, and the wife vows to love God above all else through the exclusive love of her husband. The grace of that beautiful sacrament strengthens their common bond of love of God above all else through loving each other, and it unites them till death do us part. With God as the center of the marriage, they'll, they'll continue to love God even after one of them dies, although in a different way. The human time-bound unity passes, but the unity with God remains. That lasting unity only found in Him. After our petitions in a little while, 
we'll hear in the offertory prayer also an emphasis on unity this evening. We'll ask the Lord to grant us unity and peace in your church through the one sacrifice offered once for all. We'll ask, Lord, grant us unity in your church. Not only are we praying here for all of us present to be united in the Catholic Church that Christ established, but that all the baptized may be united in that church and indeed all humanity, everyone. St. Paul writes in his letter to Timothy that God desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And we just heard in the Gospel of how Matthew recounting Peter's famous profession of faith, that bold exclamation of who Jesus is. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter's declaring, Jesus, you are God, you are the Messiah, you and no one else have come to bring salvation to us, to save us, to forgive us of all of our sins. That's a powerful statement. And how does our Lord respond? He says, blessed are you, Simon, and then goes on, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. Christ established his church upon that rock of Peter's profession of faith. A church to gather and unite the nations into the one flock of Christ the Good Shepherd, the one flock of the Catholic Church. Christ desires the unity of all mankind into that church that he established. Unity that's bound together by love of him, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. That unity that endures forever. Every time we gather for Mass, we make the same sign of the cross. We profess our common belief in the creed. We enter the one sacrifice of Christ to the Father on a single altar. And at, at other times, we gather as a parish for festivities to celebrate an anniversary or some parish milestone. And so we have all these reminders of that unity of gathering as a community for different purposes. And so may our parish community at those times be a sign of that unity with God that endures forever. A sign that attracts people into the, into the flock because of the many blessings that we have, the great gift that we have in our faith. And when we are faced by the uncertainties of our times that we heard in the read it in the collect as well, the uncertainties of this world, and when even our church is shaken by scandals or the sins of her members, let us remember the words of Jesus. Upon this rock I will build my church. It's Christ's church, not ours, and thanks be to God for that. Christ is in complete control and he has a plan to bring good even from our worst sins, our greatest downfalls. What that plan is, we probably will never know this side of eternity, but what we do know is that in the end, Christ's church will triumph. The gates of the netherworld will not prevail against it. And that's a message of hope. And not only that, but we too will triumph if we remain close to the God in that true, lasting unity found only in Him.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven. With love for the one who loves us, let us now bring our petitions to him. That those who serve the church as leaders will be faithful and courageous. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that regimes built on repression and violence will be transformed by the desire for trust and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who search for meaning will find wisdom and knowledge in God who knows all things. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are sick will find compassion and understanding. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this community will build up the church by its words and deeds. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That the faithful who have died in Christ will have eternal life, including Joanne Carlin and Bernice Coleman. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. O God, our refuge and our strength, look upon us with favor and answer all these prayers, especially those prayers we hold in the depths of our hearts for that unity that lasts forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, to you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Ber Donald, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and, to, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord, amen. Remember also Lord your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace 